Hi, I am in Kusuko National Park in Honduras, which is in the Mirandan mountain range, and I'm on an expedition with Operation Wallacea. They do expeditions worldwide, and it's a really nice way to get in people to experience firsthand what field conservation research is all about. With me today is Sam Jones, uh, who is the senior ornithologist on site. Sam, thank you very much for agreeing to the no interview. Uh, if you could tell us a little bit about what you do here at Kusuko. So I'm responsible for all the ornithological research in the park, as you know, which is um, basically a series of kind of constant effort monitoring program which we've done for about 15 years now. Uh, so essentially, initially it was a series of inventorying work, which is kind of finding out exactly the kind of baseline on sort of communities in the park. Now we're kind of monitoring those uh, at different stages throughout the park in a kind of transect-based network based on a number of different satellite cameras. Right, and uh, why is that important? So the park here is very important in terms well, in, uh, for lots of different taxa, um, particularly amphibians. There's a number of species which are endemic to the park, but in terms of the birds, we've contributed, our work has contributed to it um, being named as one of the sort of world's you know, top uh, 100 25 most irreplaceable areas in the world. Um, it is also a really important region uh, just for the fact it's very poorly studied. Uh, the Honduras mm -hmm. in general is very poorly studied. So this area of kind of northern Central America and the highlands in particular are A, very threatened, but B, poorly studied and poorly known. So our work is contributing to the kind of conservation management and, dis and, and actually to the kind of protected area uh, management plans, uh, plans as well. Okay, brilliant. And uh, can you tell us a little bit about how you got here? You, you started birding at a very young age, didn't you? Yes, yeah, so I, uh, I actually started working in the park four years ago, so in 2012. Uh, before that, I'd been a really keen birder since I was young, and I'd been uh, a, a licensed ringer for quite a while as well. Uh, but I got involved in this kind of, this side of kind of expedition work, uh, probably about five years or so ago, um, by, by working sort of internationally an awful lot, um, well, all over the world particularly, but um, yeah, the new, Parts of the new and old world tropics is where I did a lot of expedition kind of inventory and work. Okay, and I think a lot of young people have this very uh, glamorous idea of what field work is all about. Just, you know, the, they see stuff on documentaries and see it's, it's going to be amazing. What, what are the challenges? What is hard about it? I think uh, it's an inherently challenging, uh, it's an inherently challenging because uh, we work in remote environments often, which are physically quite demanding, uh, which and it can also have a lot of mentally demanding elements as well. Um, it's not a it's not a completely glamorous thing. You have to be able to put up with a lot of insects, mud, uh, things going wrong. You have to be very flexible and relaxed about how the work goes. In terms of actually designing a field study, it's very difficult as well because there's so many things you can't control for and you just can't uh, you can't manage how a protocol is going to work sometimes until you actually get into the field. So you have to be very flexible. Um, as you say as well, uh, it is it's a uh, Build is a very kind of glamorous side of research, but actually it's not particularly glamorous. Uh, so one of the biggest challenges is it's um, still quite, I'd say, quite poorly valued academically because you accrue quite basic information, um, which is yeah, which isn't particularly sort of publishable or publishable in sort of high impact journals, but it is incredibly valuable baseline information. Um, so I'd say it's kind of twofold. Physically, it is, is demanding, but it's also quite kind of undervalued academically. Okay, so uh, what, would be, what would be your advice to young people who would like to follow this line of uh, conservation work? Uh, I think it's a wonderful field of work and it's incredibly exciting. It's exceptionally rewarding. I've, I've, I've said the challenges in it, but it's exceptionally rewarding. So I think anyone who uh, is, is interested, particularly in any taxonomic group, or the desire to work in this kind of environment should completely go for it. But I think it's important to be totally realistic about what you can achieve by doing it and the skills that you can bring to that. Um, and realistic uh, in a kind of continuum of time, so what you can achieve in, in you know, the space of time, or what skills you need to attain to be able to do the sort of research you want to do, or perhaps work in said environment. Um, I think it's important, volunteering in this field is very important. Um, I think it's, you know, it's had some quite poor press, actually, in, in, uh, it has attracted some poor press, but um, I think the important thing is in providing that the volunteer is still gaining, so it's still learning from that relationship and they're being valued for their presence there uh, in whatever dynamic that is. I think it's incredibly important. Uh, so it, it's, it's a case of placing value upon the individual. So they, the, you know, whoever is the volunteer must really know kind of what they're getting from it. When it starts to get to the point where they're not gaining, you know, they're not getting paid an experience, so to speak, then, you know, perhaps it's time to then seek something in a new field, so to speak. But I think, uh, yeah, I encourage anyone to go for it, but be very realistic about what you can achieve in it and the skill sets you need to attain for that. 
Okay, brilliant. Cool. Uh, usually I ask people about their favorite song, but <laughs> in this case I'm going to ask you what your favorite bird call is. Uh, well, I think I have a number of different favorite bird calls, but in Honduras and in the Highlands here, my favorite song probably is a bird called Northern Nightingale Wren. Uh, which is a funny little wren, it's something we're obviously very acquainted to in the old world, but wrens are actually a much more new world radiation of birds. And it has a wonderful song which sounds like a child playing a piano that never seems to get tired and can play it for sort of several minutes long. And it's just a series of random notes, but I think if you're on a really drizzly, grey, rainy, kind of quite cold day, which we get off, often get in the Highlands here in Honduras, if you hear that, you can't really help but be a bit happy. Brilliant. Well, Sam, thank you very much. You're welcome. And uh, thank you for watching. And over the over the course of the next few weeks, I will be doing some more interviews with other field scientists here in Kasuku. So stay tuned.